Welcome to an extraordinary experiment. I'm on a street that looks pretty much like any other street in Britain. But this one is different. The people living here are going to have to do a whole lot more for themselves and get used to having a whole lot less done for them. I'm asking the people on this street to live without something we all take for granted, council services. Everything the council provides is going for six weeks. What a mess. I don't want to do this. It's really messed up. It's, it's not right. Oh! The residents have to manage their time and money to fill the gap. I need Libby school meals. Paying for. We need the money. Money's just ever decreasing, isn't it? It's just going out at window like for fun. They must work together to confront problems. If it was like something Banksy would do, it would be like amazing. Oh, nothing ever goes right, does it? Nothing ever goes right. They have to care for the vulnerable. There's one thing I, I would really like, and that's someone to help me with my ironing. You're passion killers, aren't they, these yeah. <laughs> Their budget gets slashed. Cuts means choices. It's choices time. We're broke. Until community reaches breaking point. And you're criticising him. Criticising him. That's my dub. Never dealt with anything like that before. It's gone way too personal now, and this is it for us. There'll be a community that's in tattoos forever, because the people won't forget and they won't forgive. Do you know what? Keep your housing benefit, because if this is the sort of people so judgmental I live around, I'd rather move. This conversation's finished. Judgmental or so? We've come to Britain's newest city, Preston in Lancashire to put an entire street to the test. As councils all over Britain make cuts, will people be prepared to do more for themselves and more for their neighbours? How will they make the choices normally made for them? What could you live without? What could you do for yourself? How would you decide whose needs come first? Well, you might just be about to find out. Welcome to the street that cut everything. This is a street much like any other in Britain. Here, manual workers live next door to middle managers. Public sector workers live across the road from private businessmen. Many have young families, some are retired. A few are single parents. The street's oldest resident is 76-year-old Pam Pickin. I've lived in this house since August 1967. There's been some lovely neighbours. I know the kids' names, you know, but... Uh... When it comes to their parents, or your mum and dad, you know. <laughs> Across the road from Pam and newcomers to the street, single mum Tracy and her two children, Libby and Casey. I like to consider myself to be very independent. I'm not used to having any help. Everything I've done, I've done myself. So that'd be interesting to me, to have to do something together. Next door, a care worker's Lily and Trina and Jess, a trainee nurse. I think when you're working as a young person in the health industry and you're on minimum wage, paying £125 a month for council tax can be a bit of a struggle. And then there's Maria and Graham Haggis. They've lived on the street for 17 years. We know the cuts are coming, don't yeah, we? But we don't quite know how, how hard they will impact on us. And maybe this experiment will give people some indication of where communities can actually work together uh, and, and solve a problem. Tonight, I'm meeting the 52 residents of the street for the first time. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, I'm Hiya. Hiya. I'm giving them a set of rules to follow for the next six weeks. Everything will be cut except access to emergency services and schools. Hello, Margaret. Nice to meet you. In reality, no street will have everything cut. No. Hi. Hi. But I want to discover whether a regular community like this can pull together. In just six weeks, they'll face challenges which their city and county councils would normally face in a year. OK, can I um, gather you around? <laughs> Starting tomorrow for six weeks, the council doesn't exist. 
you can't use council services. And we're going to give you back six weeks council tax that you can spend for yourself. That's your budget. The simple way to think about it is the council doesn't exist. You're it. They're not there anymore. Whilst the residents are gathered together, they're unaware that outside, we've asked the council to start withdrawing its services. Straight away. Some neighbours know each other, some are meeting for the very first time. Interested in it? I think the main thing is communication, isn't it? Well, Let's I mean, set yeah. up a yeah. committee. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's the first yeah. thing. Well, to be honest, I, I just look at the council tax bill and I just think, OK, £1,400 down the swan, basically, because I, I just cannot see any value for money. Jeanette St Jean is the head of drama at a nearby private school. Her partner, Soretzi, works as a manager for a supermarket supplier. They've lived on the street for the last 10 years. I'm not one of these who will jump in feet first and say, right, you know, I'll take charge of this. I, I'm just not that sort of person. We need to have a meeting where everyone is available. Sooner job. rather than later. Right, who wants Sunday? I'm working myself for a weekend, so yeah. I'm not available. So you want... Right, so. Monday night. Who's available Monday night? I don't know what time I'm going to be finishing work. The people from the street who are here are agreed that they're going to have to do this together, uh, but they find it quite difficult to work out how to actually do that. It's not easy, this. Quite a lot of a hierarchy already and some incredibly outspoken people. Um, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes down. Most people don't notice very much their councils do, so we're beginning this experiment by cutting the services they do. Oh, oh is that? Yeah, I think there's one over there. Got to the street lights off. The residents arrive back on the street just in time to see their last lamp go out. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for leaving us in the dark. Say, say bye to the council, there. <laughs> bye, 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 council! The lights are not about to go off all over Britain, but with streetlights costing the country half a billion pounds a year, some councils are dimming some lights. You don't realise how dark it is, do you, when you turn the, light, turn the lights off, do you? And switching off others between midnight and 5am. Going to school in the morning, it's going to be uh, quite dark. Could create some issues there. We're going to miss them, aren't we? Yes, huh? we are. This is just the start. For the near future, the street will have to cope with a whole load of challenges that we send their way. The council won't be back here for another six weeks. Tomorrow's going to be another interesting day. It's 3 a.m. and we're taking advantage of the blackout to deliver the residents another challenge. We've arranged for junk to be fly-tipped on the street. This is something councils regularly have to deal with. Oh, hell. I've got fly tippers. <laughs> I've seen anything like that before. What a mess. John Rayner owns a successful caravan business. I go to bed, I sleep them, I breathe them. Honestly, no, a night goes by where I just don't lie in bed and think about them. caravans and I'm sad I need to get out more, don't I? <laughs> Despite the wealth that passion has brought him, John has never moved away from the street he loves. How many people do we know down the street? We know a lot of people, don't we? Uh, well, we've lived here 25 years. Some are socialised with more than others. John, well, as I say, he's a, he's a doer. He gets on with things, doesn't mess about. He'll, if he can tackle the problem, he'll sort it out there and then. Oh, look at this. It's terrible. Oh, the fridge freezes. Oh, what a lot of mess. It's going to take some getting rid of this lot. Here's a welcome sight. The council arrives to collect the bins. Oh, 
I'm not taking it. Basically, they're taking all the bins back but leaving the rubbish behind them. <laughs> it's going to be a busy day. We've been presented with a big problem here. There is a, a lot of waste that we need to think about how we're going to dispose of in an environmentally friendly way. As the nurses who live on the street don't have a car, they have a solution. You can put um, any rubbish or any waste in our garage if you want so that cats don't get in it, because at least you can shut the door. All we have to remember is to put the bins out on one morning every two weeks, and we can't even get that right most weeks. Yeah. Pretty decent of them. <laughs> Meanwhile, businessman John is on the case with the fridges. Somebody's uh, fly tip two fridge freezers. You can't take them. In the council. Have you any idea where we could get rid of them, please? Legally. Legally. Council, council only. All right then. Okay. Thanks very much for your help. Okay. Bye bye. Council only. Council only. Are we allowed to pay the council privately to do it? No. Uh, no, they don't. They don't exist. They don't exist. They don't exist. Anyway. Last night, the residents agreed to put off making any important decisions until their first official meeting. Now, they're not so sure. We need a chairperson. Who's yeah. going to be chairperson? We need somebody to take control, don't we? We should rotate it. I vote Jeanette. You're very good at it. Everybody has to say yes to our committee. No, I don't want to. No, I agree. Once you set one up, you have to give them the power to make certain decisions on your behalf. Because we, we can't have 30 people making every single decision. Nothing will ever happen. What about two people then? Too many voices already, isn't it? OK, right. Who wants the to be the first group of five? Let's Maria Haggis runs a children's nursery. Right, can we recap? I think I'll get very involved. Um, I don't think I'll be at the forefront. We need to recap again, because I think it's changing all the time, isn't it? I think it'll be a challenge. There are a lot of people with voices, big voices, and it might be a bit of a struggle. Right, OK, so, so just a recap. They'll follow, do you know? No. You watch and see. I bet watch I'd... that space. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm telling you, watch that space. <laughs> we said we weren't having individuals today. We said we'd decide that tomorrow. Right, so we've okay. cancelled so the camp. Yeah, we've cancelled the... Right, right, why was that cancelled? Because we said we're going to think about... Right, we don't so know who, who wants to be it, who doesn't want to sure. think about it and just do it, cos if we're going to do it... <laughs> well, we, we've got we're a gonna meeting tomorrow to do it, to but, sort it out. What time? I arrived just in time to discover that after much debate, they've all agreed to do very little. And is somebody in charge of your work, that's it? We really, haven't really delegated any sort of roles yet. Yeah. We just sort of agreed that the priority is to get the streets safe and clean at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. One thing at a time. One thing at a time. Yeah. Yeah. If we rush in, we could get it horribly wrong. Yes, yes. But that all changes when it starts to rain. We need to bring the big stuff first, like big square stuff. It's off it. This is the new Rubber council retreat, tip. Yeah. <laughs> John, his son and Maria's husband, Graham, shoot off to the bottle bank at the local supermarket. I feel that there is going to be one or two fallouts, me. The Monday meeting's the critical thing to, to organise in ourselves yeah. before we start trying to organise everything else. Yeah, but you, you want the leader's job, would you? Uh, would you not? Well, if it's only if it's only control, yeah, it won't be easy. You've got, but... a, you've got more chance of falling out with someone if you're the, if you're the leader, are you really? Well, so... I, I don't know. They leave, thinking it's a job well done. Single mum Tracy has found a flyer at home. She calls the number to arrange the collection of the fridges. Hiya. Do you collect fridge freezers? You do, fantastic. Will you picking them up then today, Tom? Or mm. right, lovely. It's coming today. It's falling back at two o'clock, so we need the fridge freezers on the drive. On the drive here. Yeah. 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 The trouble is, the fridges are now at the back of the nurse's garage. Yeah, we need to get that fridge freezer out. There's somebody coming to pick them up later on out today. Oh, you joking? Who oh, put it in first? I've got it in the trunk. All right. Got it. Bit of progress. It's just the uh, the general household waste we've got to wait and sort out once we. Uh, and find out, um, get some tenders for how much it'll cost us to shift that, really. Of course, no official council means no council tax, so it's time for a little treat. I'm about to give the residents the first of their rebates to spend as they see fit. 
but they're not going to get it as a street. They're going to get it household by household. They'll have to make their own minds up whether they want to pool it. This is their budget, at least for the next two weeks. Each envelope contains £52.90. This is your budget. Each household has to decide. Do you want to keep it? You can keep it. Do you want to pool it? You can pool it. And you'll get the rest as we go along, all right? And okay. then it's up to you guys to decide treasure, what right? to do. Yeah. So where's Helen and Martin? It's been, for all of us, a damp start to the first weekend of this experiment. The residents have now a garage full of rubbish, but no real idea of who's in charge or what's coming their way. I think that's the biggest thing. I think all the conversations at the moment is what sort of things, what sort of challenges are going to be thrown at us during the six weeks. I mean, there's the obvious things that we, we know about, sort of the bins and the recycling, street lights, that kind of thing. But then there's probably other services that we've not really thought about, which I think will get thrown into the mix. The residents are each dependent on the council to different degrees. Pensioner Pam uses a free council bus service to get her about. Uh, I need six cigarettes, sugar, coffee. The one thing that is really, really bothering me is if they do cut out the Dada bus. Because as I say, I, I would be stuck for shopping again. I would be relying on my family going and getting me, neighbours getting me stuff, which I don't like doing. And the fact that I'm meeting other people. Yeah, she's got a bungalow near me. Oh, I'm Yeah, but it's on the great vibe. That is the one thing that really, really worries me. You know, it's, it's my weekly outing. It's something to look forward to every week. That and the fact that my daughter comes around every Saturday night and we have a takeaway and play cards. We gamble. <laughs> Jeanette and Soretzi are regulars at the local leisure centre. It has been one of the best things for me, so having it taken away will be a bit of a blow. One of the reasons I wouldn't want to lose it is that I might get lazy and get back into the old habits. Old habits. Yeah. And other less obvious facilities are out of bounds too. I can't use the leisure centre anymore because it doesn't exist. Therefore, I've pulled my boots out of the cupboard and decided to go for a walk in the park. Oh, yeah, it's, count it's um, Preston City Council Park, so therefore... Uh, <laughs> Therefore, I'm not going for a walk in the park, but I'm going to have to go on the, uh, on the footpaths around the town. Ah. As he pounds the pavements, Mick Duffy is starting to worry about how the street disposed of the fridges. With the fridges, I don't think it was legal for a minute. I'm, I'm going to take it forward. I'm going to get hold of the, the, the details of the person who we gave them to, check that it's registered for actually for that type of work, degassing them. I think we need to, to act responsibly, really, if, and chase it up. Day three, and the start of the working week presents a new set of challenges, particularly for single mum Tracy Lambert, who's training to be a social worker. If there's ever anybody around me where I feel, you know, there might be a little bit of conflict in, in, in my day-to-day -day life, I tend to just bring a little bit of humour Mm. into the equation and it seems to just dampen things down a little bit. Her 19-year-old daughter Casey is a student too with a part-time job. And seven-year-old Libby attends the local school. The family relies heavily on council benefits, including free school meals, pre- and after-school clubs. <laughs> Dear Tracy, we would like to remind you that your daughter Libby is not permitted to use breakfast club for the next six weeks. She's also not allowed to use the after-school club she normally goes to every day. You have agreed to opt out of council services. You know, there's no way I can try and find alternative arrangements for her because I have no family near me. And I haven't got any friends around me, so... A few doors down, Tina Milner also now has a dilemma. We would like to inform you that Cory is not permitted to use the school bus to get to and from school for the next six weeks. You'll get plenty of exercise walking home. <laughs> I get the bus to school. Quite a lot of us would end up walking if um, we don't have that bus. It's just a bit awkward. And it is a long walk. It's, I think it's too long a walk for someone who's only 11. So she's going to get a lift off from the sister in the morning when they can take her. Come on, Mum. 
I think for as a family, it's been our most significant one, really, because it uh, has quite an impact. The family help means Cara is spared the five-mile round trip to school. Tracy would rather persevere on her own than ask for favours. No, I went through cancer treatment and didn't ask my neighbours for help, so why on earth would I ask them for help to look after Libby? Where's Wiggy? I wear this a lot because Libby prefers Mummy in a wig, don't you? Yeah. Don't you? But it's growing now, my hair, and I've got a style, so... That's better. <laughs> I honestly think that we will realise that what we are paying isn't really that bad for what services we do receive. It's Monday evening and time for the street's first official meeting. Welcome to number one. <laughs> um, I certainly never expected to get the whole street in the living room when, uh, when we started putting the extension up. You can see the meetings still be light-hearted uh, and good fun, but then we suddenly realise that we've got to get an agenda together and we've got to actually organise something and then somebody has actually, within that meeting, got to do it, basically. Yeah, if I can just um, <coughs> say something there. I personally don't believe that we need a committee at all okay. because we are a community. We are the committee. Yeah. Yeah. We've all been given a couple of weeks of uh, council tax money and I think as a group we need to decide whether we're going to pool that or whether people want to opt out and do their own thing and, and keep all of it. In terms of finance, are we happy to put finances in Sonia's hands? Your hands. <laughs> right. Pooling the funds gives the street a total of £1,058 to spend. By the end of the meeting, they've agreed on some basic rules. Majority vote rules. Yeah. 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 One house, one vote. Yeah. 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 Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. It's Friday morning, a full six days after the residents awoke to a street full of rubbish and fly tipping. Six, another six inches. They're eventually getting rid of it at a private dump. They do it all themselves. And that's your receipt. And it costs 60 quid for the privilege. It was all right doing this, but would I want to do this every week? No. no. It's the first time the residents have actually spent any of their pooled budget, which is a worry for Tracy's daughter, Casey. She's concerned the street might not be willing to dip into its funds to replace the benefits some of them rely on. Each household has been given £52.90 for two weeks. Now, everybody has different council services um, and everybody has different council needs. So if one household could possibly use uh, more than the £52.90 during the two weeks, are the street going to be OK with that? I see myself as not taking a back seat. If I do have an opinion and think something should be done differently, then I'd then be the person saying, well, hang on, if you did it like this. Casey invites some neighbours around for a chat about how it's going. It's soon clear that the nurses from next door are not happy. If you want something that nobody else needs, such as we leave early on shift work, Nobody else needs the street lights on, but we need some form of light, otherwise we're tripping around for our own feet. If I want a torch, do I have to then appeal have a for, a torch, have a torch, for a torch? For a torch? Our rules say they can't use their own money, even a pound for a torch. The nurses are frustrated. They can't take a few quid from the pot without getting permission from the whole street first. If everybody wanted a torch, that could get expensive. Seems that younger people don't seem to get heard as much as more mature people. <laughs> Just like uh, at work and stuff. If, in my opinion, it's not as valid as somebody older because just because they're seen to have more experience, even if I've worked in the job longer or something. You might want to... Uh, it's grey areas, though. The thing mm. is, we no, leave... I understand that. I understand yeah. that. I might decide I want a £10 torch, so we have to get control over, okay. over things. I yeah. think there's now, a simple solution to this. Well, if you need a torch for six in the morning, I'll lend you mine, because I don't need it. Because I can lend you a torch. I've got yeah. that too. Do. Everyone is rallying around, for now. Whether they spend money on individual requests, we'll have to wait for the weekly formal meeting. 
It's been exactly a week since I set the street the challenge. I want to see how they're getting on. But just as importantly, who exactly is in charge? Graham, hi. Hey, mate. How are you doing? Hi, how are you doing? You all right? What are you up to? <laughs> hi, how are you? Hi, all right. A cuppa would be very nice. After several cups of tea with the residents, it becomes clear there are two differing opinions. Those who want a casual community and those who want formal leadership. There's not going to be a leader. What? We're going to work as a community together and so everybody is involved. Sounds better, so, Jess. Yeah, I think, I think that's a better way to do it than having a committee, yeah. I just don't think they want somebody at the helm. Mm. They just see it as a community thing. We're all in it together and we all take a boat. Mm. But it, that will not work. You haven't got a committee? No. You haven't got a leader? No. no. Are you sure? When you're faced with a crisis, you have to invent a new way of doing things. Yeah. And, um, good point. The residents have agreed to meet as a whole street every Sunday afternoon. As they prepare for their second meeting, some of them are starting to ponder the value of their local councils. Well, then no wonder councils are going short of money. There's just there's, there seems to be a service for everything, you know. And if they cut if they cut a few of the council services, I think people would uh, would manage and they'd survive off their own devices. I think uh, I'm probably of the opinion that you know we may pay a little bit too much for what we get, you know. But you don't see a lot of things that are happening in the background. It's Mick Duffy's turn to chair. I've ditched the PowerPoint and, and I've left the laptop and projector at home. And we've, we've got a flip chart here and we can, we can write on that as we go along. Yes, Rector. Right, I find that at these meetings and little gatherings and that, we've got too many top dogs, wannabes, things being talked about mm -hmm. and not being done. Mm -hmm. Okay. The first meeting, people were, you know, were being talked over. John, can you write that down, please? The jobs we've had to do, we've not finished any of them yet. We've only had one. But can we hold this discussion on agenda it then? Because we're gonna do exactly the same thing again. Okay. Let's set an agenda for a minute. Just a list, literally, of agendas. I think when we're meeting together. Some people won't have sat in a meeting before, they won't have done any sort of formal meetings and it's quite hard to get some sort of order together to get your agenda out and get things sorted. That's something I'm worrying about is actually when we leave a meeting we all know what we're going to do and what our roles are for that week. Tracy arrives late and though not on the agenda, her family's needs take centre stage. I've been hit hard with, not, with no out of school club for Libby. I am struggling picking her up from school in the evening when she should be in after school club. Okay. So I don't know whether that's something that the community would... What time does she finish school? Think of half past time three. Does she half three. three. I'm not used to asking for help. I'm very proud no, of her. No, but what I am, but what I am, I like to offer help. And I'm help, not used so, to relying on yeah. anybody either, no. which has put me in a no, really yeah. awkward position. No, it's not awkward. I don't want you to feel awkward. So it means somebody they could pick her up about half three. No. After 90 long minutes, yeah, confirm the next meeting yes. is next Sunday, 2 o'clock. 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. It's all down to communication. Thanks very much, everyone. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. The meeting ends with no money spent. Although Tracy didn't want to rely on her neighbours, the street has offered to help collect Libby from school rather than pay for her to use taxis. But the very next day, the new arrangement goes wrong. Soretzi has agreed to take Casey to collect Libby. But the traffic's bad, and the seven-year-old is left stranded after school. A bit late leaving work, traffic, and um, I got round to the car park, and I were in the wrong car park, and I drove round twice, so, you know. There was an offer of help there, so I took it, and it just hasn't worked out. Whereas if she'd have had the money for a taxi, the taxi would have been there at three o'clock. When she finished at three o'clock, then she would have been down here. It's not going to happen again. It can't happen again. But the nurses next door doubt that the street will be willing to fork out for the cabs. 
you've had a lot of problems trying to buy yourself a one pound torch. So what's there's gonna be an even yeah. more of a problem getting a five pound taxi a couple of times a week. To me everything seems to be the cheapest option. Yeah. And cheapest is not always best. I'm just not going to allow my family's needs to be up for negotiation, debate or vote. Access to cash isn't the only issue affecting the street. With the lack of action, problems are mounting. Rubbish is piling up. They may have broken the law when they disposed of the fridges. I just don't understand who would have picked up the fridge freezers on Saturday. We've got the... Um, the uh, Hazardous Waste Act on at 2005 on our backs. And there's no sign of any replacement street lighting. The cover of darkness allows us to organise another challenge for the residents. Vandals. The government estimates that it costs over a billion pounds a year to fix vandalism. There are over a thousand incidents of graffiti in Preston alone. And as if that's not enough, the fridges are back. How annoying is that? Just mindless vandalism, isn't it? Terrible. But there's no point getting het up about it. What's done is done. Getting het up and angry isn't going to solve anything. If it was like a proper drawing, like something Banksy would do, it would be like amazing and we'd want to like sell the garage door. Uh, dear residents, it's come to our attention that you did not dispose of the fly tip fridge freezers in an appropriate manner. To comply with the law, you should have used a registered waste carrier certified by the Environmental Agency. We have provided you with a replacement fridge freezers to give you the opportunity to dispose of them legally. <laughs> they didn't get a certificate of tipping or a certificate of waste disposal, as I brought up at the meeting, but which incidentally are not recorded in the minutes, which is interesting. Minutes that were taken, typed and distributed by nursery manager Maria. I think people are not listening. I think. Um, we're too busy trying to put our own points of views across and I think there's too many people making the decisions. Time then for me to bring the street to order. So, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. You uh, got rid of the fridges. I learned by you missed Yeah, no, fridges have to go to authorised disposal people and if you don't, you get fined. And it could have been, we could be finding you £5,000 for the illegal disposal of fridges. So I'm going to be generous and charge you £300 out of your budget. Okay. And who knows the other mistake you've made? Well, your mistake's just coming here now yeah. in the back of that lorry, because people thought, well, take the recycling to a supermarket recycling centre. Who do you think removes it? The council. So we're, uh, we're giving it you back. This is why I say when we get a tax, we need to allocate responsibility to people. We need two people to do research what it is we have to do, two people to price what we have to do, two people to look into the background of what it is we have to do. Thinking All right, and thinking and planning, that's the only way forward. And with those words thinking and planning ringing in their ears, the residents dive headlong into the cleanup. Single mum Tracy has quietly lit a fuse. Not happy to rely on neighbours to pick up Libby from school, she's asked residents for £30 to pay for taxes 
and to reimburse for lost school meals. I mean, I've sent an email round. I would like money out of the pot for services that have been revoked. And please, could they let me know by Monday at the latest? You're putting them to a test, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> but the response is no laughing matter for Tracy. So, answer to your question, I believe we would need to know what services have been revoked that justify such a substantial amount of money and, if justified, would require to go to a vote. Graham and Maria no So, I need a majority vote as to whether or not my daughter can have school meals. How's that for community spirit? There are strong views on benefits here as elsewhere. But I don't think people being people, if there's, a, if there's any kind of uh, monetary thing to be had, they're there, they're like blooming vultures. Claim. They're there, they claim, 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 claim. If there's a, if there's a tenner to be had off the council... It's like free school lunches, you know. What's wrong with taking a sandwich? Yeah. I had a daughter who worked all her life on her own, never, never didn't do a job, never claimed a benefit in it at all, and she got there with little help from us. So I know if you get off your bottoms, there is something out there. Tracy's demands have become the talk of the street. I thought it was absolutely out of order for any mum to just ask anybody to pick a child up. Would you do that if it was Hallie? Would you say to any one of you that we don't know, will you just come pick her up for the next six weeks? Absolutely. Are we allowed to evict her? So, no. <laughs> a comment has just been made off camera. Are we allowed to evict her? So, no. <laughs> but Tracy's neighbours heard. I don't know whether they were joking or not, but I thought that it wasn't appropriate and I thought it was very harsh. We've also had to tell Tracy that she was upset. The only reason I'm continuing on is because if I don't, then who is there to represent people like me? The very first time the street faces a real choice, all that cheerful teamwork turns into resentment and division. i tell you one thing, though. When this is done, I'm moving. If some hoped cleaning up would be a distraction, Jeanette's discovered that, once again, rushing into action wasn't necessarily the right thing to do. Right, so the upshot of that call is, is that really, if because we're removing graffiti from the street lamps, we have to proceed with caution. Any damage to those, we will be liable for. Water into the electrics of the street lamps. I said we should have gone and researched it. And we yes, have and that's what we, we're doing every time. We're just going and doing something. We need to research. So the option is maybe affirm the committee. So I, I think if we possibly get someone a specialist in just to have a look at that maybe. Well if we get a specialist in it's gonna cost us how much? I know. Is, it, is it necessary? Is it necessary? We've just lost we've just been found three hundred pounds. Um. Is, 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 any, is anybody offended by a little bit of white that you can see? A little bit yeah. of... Is yeah. Anybody... yeah, yeah, I am, yeah. I hate graffiti. I think graffiti is its just such an eyesore. It's kids who think it's cool to actually go around and spray on walls, I think it's just pathetic. So, shall we do that? And then if we email everybody yeah. what, what we've found and then yeah. we'll organise a meeting yeah. during the week, during the week yeah. to sort out what we're going to do. Man, probably some people grumble down here, won't they? We should get a specialist firm in, shouldn't they? Money's just ever decreasing, isn't it? It's just going out at window light for fun. Back at her house, Maria has a plan for actually making some money okay. out of the street's rubbish. Could we come today? We're just going now to a company to see if they'll help us out with our waste. The street's waste has been building up. There are collection points, an old greenhouse for rubbish, and a trailer for recycling. But the girls from up the road haven't made it to either yet. They're keeping their waste in the house, away from the neighbourhood cats. All right, our rubbish is in our front room at the moment. 
that's all our rubbish at the moment. Oh, oh no, I'm getting out of here, me. It really smells. Oh, I don't like it. Oh, pressure. If, for argument's sake, your whole street were to get together and put all your cardboard together yeah. for, for the period of a few weeks yeah. and all your tin cans and sort yeah. it all out, we'd then be able to weigh it and give you a value on that. On average, we now recycle 40% of our rubbish, but as much as 60% can be reused. I think this is pretty good news for our group. We can bring it all packed up in the different recycling units so we will actually be able to make some money for our budget. Thanks to Maria's research, the rubbish is eventually taken to the private recycling centre. In return for all the street's petrol money, ten days of aggravation and hours on end of sorting, the grand total they receive is... Well earned. Thank you very much. £15.20. Is that value for money? The way we've done it, no. It needs to get more organised. But £15 does pay for one of those fridges to be disposed of. Legally this time. Uh, £15 a fridge, so it'll be £30 in total. Yep, thank you. And with all the proper paperwork. The residents of the street have embraced the idea of dealing with practical challenges left to them because the council is no longer doing them, dealing with the rubbish and the recycling and all the rest of it. Much harder, of course, is the personal choices about who needs what, who gets what. That, though, is precisely what they're now going to have to deal with. As they assemble for their meeting at the end of week two, there's one burning issue the street has yet to confront. Whether or not to pay Tracy the money she needs for Libby's cabs, school clubs and meals, and Casey's university costs. First of all, welcome to the meeting. But surprisingly first on the agenda is the issue of solvents. I just wanted to draw your attention to, for example, some of the laws that we needed to adhere to regarding the graffiti. So option one, removal of the graffiti ourselves. So if we are removing it ourselves, it's got to come from a trusted specialist supplier and We've got to take appropriate measures to protect our health and safety. We'll move on to option four. I don't know about the residents, but I'm already overwhelmed. We're about 40 minutes into this meeting. We've had a very detailed conversation about exactly which solvent to use to remove graffiti. And yet a week ago, Tracy emailed people saying she needed a tenner for lunch money and she needed 20 quid for something else. It's not on the agenda. Nobody's raised it yet. I think that's the majority vote, so we're going to use the free kit uh, initially, OK? Next item on the agenda is the social. I'm He's... not interested in the social, and I won't be attending, obviously. Um, but I do have some other business that needs right. to be discussed. Can we... I'll, I'll, I'll t t finish this point, and then... Um... Finally, it is time for Tracy to speak. Right, well, I would like a service provided that has been removed. I need Libby school meals paying for, which is £19.50 per fortnight out of the fortnightly money. So Rexy kindly went to pick Casey up to collect Libby, and it didn't work out, did it, Sir Rexy? Oh, it, they were late. Yeah. I would like £22.75 for her to access her after-school club again. Per week. Right. Can I say that? Um... I haven't finished yet. There's another one. Because of our income status, Casey's at university and her fees are wavered, which is wavered by Lancashire County Council. Mm -hmm. And the cost of that course is 150, which breaks it's down at 25 pounds per week. So will they pay? Yeah. Okay. Happy with that. Not what you call rapturous agreement, but the street are willing to pay the benefits. I expected a more negative response, mm -hmm. and I didn't get it, so I was I was pleasantly surprised. But that's what it's about, isn't it? That's what we're paying. That there's points in your life where you use more services, and you're probably, you know, getting very good value for money. And there's points in your life where you probably don't. And but that's the way it is. It's only Tracy asking for money. Yeah. And in the end, you can afford it, mm. or you think you can. Well, what, what happens if there were ten traces? Well, then, then that's or what, fifteen traces. Well, we'd go bankrupt, wouldn't we? Councils make difficult decisions every day. Don't, you know, we're getting a tiny 
tiny sort of taste of this, and it isn't easy. It's the start of week three, and at the local school, it's time to hand out the final instalment of their council tax rebate. But just like real budget cuts at the city council, we've slashed it by just under 9%. The question is, will they pull it again? In the pot. You're looking pleased. Did I get the sense you're going to keep it for yourself? Yeah, we are. Yeah. No, not to spend on our clothes and that. This time I should keep it yeah. and spend it in my own way. But I'm going to pay for the rubbish and everything. Yeah, she's going to pay, like, you know, we are going to still pay. We've got split opinions within the house. Who oh, have you? What, somebody wants to pool it and other people want yeah, to keep it? Yeah. I sense there's a few people... Not going in the kitty. Not going in the kitty. Right. That's just cause. <laughs> Grief. Is everybody? I don't know. I'm... Yeah, everybody's in the pot now, yeah. I'm sure? Yes, yes, everybody's in the pot now. Now I've got a few surprise announcements that will make things harder. Just like a real council with an end-of-year deadline, the residents need to spend their budget before they finish the six weeks. You've allowed the street to remain totally and utterly dark. When the street lights went out and we gave you some money, did you do anything about lighting your street? No. So if you don't get your lights sorted, you may well pay a bit of a consequence for that. You've been hoarding your rubbish. Did anybody know that some members of the street are keeping rubbish in black bags on their sofas in their front room? No, I'm not going to name any names. <laughs> From now on, rubbish at least once a week to the tip, and if you don't do it, we fine you. And now for a major change. To make the residents aware of issues they've so far overlooked, from now on, I'm making them responsible for the wider community, not just the street where they live. I'm afraid we're going to give you the task of sharing in the jobs of looking after your city. Tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, two of you are on the 6 a.m. shift cleaning the streets of Preston. If you don't carry out those jobs, for each one that doesn't get carried out, the street gets fined the equivalent of a day's salary for the person who would be carrying out that job. A typical Friday night in town leaves Preston's streets in a mess. The clean-up starts at the crack of dawn for the street's volunteers. Graham and Maria, the first to step forward, are up at 5.30 on Saturday morning. Oh, look, there's other people out at silly o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Not just us. Oh, yeah. We're volunteering for some yeah. cleaning services. Oh, yeah. Well, there's the man in there. Is this your man? Morning. Morning. They're joined by John and Tina for the first and worst shift of the week. Oh, look at that. That is ridiculous. Who's done that? I found a pair of underpants, a pair of Calvin Kleins. So someone's had an interesting night. <laughs> well, I could throw up. <laughs> Preston Council picks up over 7,000 tonnes of litter a year at a cost of around £1.2 million. We don't realise when we're in our beds that they're doing this work for us and the town's tidy and clean by the time we get up. Shame on you, Prestonians. Shame, Shame on, on you. you. They know who they are, don't they? The people who are doing this. The residents are meeting to decide whether or not to pool their funds again. The nurses are opting out. There were issues at the beginning where I kind of thought, well, to be honest, this would be a lot simpler if I'd kept my own portion of the money. Like, we'd still pay everything. We just we'd just manage it ourselves rather than it right. it being enough. Lovely. Would you would you feel that you would then become very selective about what you decided to? Jess has just said. No, Sorry. we'd still pay everything that we that we have been paying and do everything exactly the same, except we'd have the money in our house and we'd hand it over. If you want to do that, I feel that you should do that. I, I can't say, you know, people cannot make decisions for you. The minute somebody starts to say, I don't want to put my money in, so I'm not going to do it, I'm standing my ground, they become out of the equation. Next week, somebody might say, I'm going to go to the leisure centre. I don't really care. And we can't say, don't do that. We haven't the right to say that as a meeting now because we can all do exactly what we want now. Not all things can be done by majority vote. And I think sometimes we have to respect 
individuals' decisions on certain things. Is everyone happy with that? We're happy to go with whatever Jess decides at the end of the day. Hello. OK, right, I declare the meeting closed. Hey! Thank you, everybody. Hey! <laughs> well, done. Good well, I thought we had a dictatorship, and a lot of people thought we had a dictatorship. They're actually telling the people what decisions have been made. That's the problem. That's what they're doing wrong. They're actually making decisions for us and just telling us what the outcome is. That's what they're doing wrong. From day one, the lack of lighting has attracted trouble to the street. Now, exactly halfway through the experiment, the residents have at last decided to do something about it. What our plan is, because like there's three street lights down our road, we want three of these, ideally with orange lights in them. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is we're going to try and screw it to the house at a high level. Could you give us a price on, on what you could do then for us? Yeah, no problem at all, yeah. Burn in mind that we've had loads of council cuts this week. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> How have you done? Oh, oh this fella, his excellent negotiating skills. They all, in total, £162, we've got them down another couple of quid, £160 all in. What did it start off at? Uh, £225 for the three weeks, plus VAT. Bargain, you got it half price. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> we did well. Very good. But the lights won't be delivered for a few days, leaving the street vulnerable. It's 10pm and we've arranged for some unwelcome visitors. Environmental health usually deal with noise pollution, but they're out of bounds, and this is hardly a police emergency. <laughs> with husband Steve working away, Lisa Tiernan has to call on her neighbour Chris. Excuse me, are you visiting somebody down here? No, just chilling. Just chilling? Yeah. No, I think you should be leaving then. We're not doing any out of the You're outside my house. It's all right. I'll get John, I'll get John and Stuart now. Hello, what's John and Stuart about? We've got, we've got some lads down here taking the piss. Are you clearing off you a lot or what? We're not doing any hard, but you keep the kids away, don't you? Disturbing kids. So I'd like you to move on, please. Set it down a bit if you want. Okay, I'm sick of it. Yeah. Just take it. Yeah. 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 No, we're getting crowbar out of garage and turn it out to in a minute. <laughs> that threat to get his crowbar persuades the youths to leave. Angry and feeling this was one challenge too far, Chris won't speak to us. Yeah, I do think that some people have overreacted, you know. They're going to have to have somewhere to hang around. If all the youth clubs shut, this is what we'll be faced with. Well, we are anyway. You know, there's not enough youth clubs out there. There's not enough for the kids to do anyway. I didn't know that. It's some weirdos, like, playing stupid music. I mean, it's rubbish music anyway. But, <laughs> but yeah, they just stood there thinking, well, ain't this a rubbish spot to chill out? <laughs> the next day, the residents spring into action, sort of. Not exactly orange yet, but so the, uh, they haven't come exactly as we, as we wanted them. We knew we were going to mount them on the side of the house on flush. So I was rather hoping that it'd come with a bracket at the back. And they haven't. Oh, nothing ever goes right, does it? Nothing ever goes right. John gets help from neighbour Tony Wilding. Chris has agreed to help too, but he's still angry after last night's challenge and won't talk on camera. So that's my dub. Finished. I'm only doing this to help John out, as I promised him. No, not doing anything on camera if you're talking about last night. It upsets me really to see my brother-in-law like that. It's, yeah. I don't like him being hurt like that, but he's, he's obviously very upset. It's a shame. I hope he comes round. Three hours later, it's time for the grand switch on. Can Harry hear us now? Hang on. Harry! Three, two, one. Woo! Past 
week or something, there's been more and more graffiti coming on the street and stuff like that. But hopefully the lights will deter people. The neighbours are gathering for their fourth weekly meeting. What they don't know is that this one will be a game changer. I'm going to hijack proceedings and reveal new challenges that will make the residents' lives tougher and the choices they face much more real. Right, uh, finance. Tracy, I'm really sorry to do this to you. Because you've been budgeting very carefully up till now, haven't you? But um, we've been looking at your money as well. And I'm afraid it looks slightly worse news than you probably thought. It's simple maths. Take account of all the other things the council provides. We haven't removed police, fire, roads. And they don't have as much money left as they thought. And that's not all. Tracy has already been given money to cover childcare, but there's other essential help she gets from the council. Anything else that you think might not have been taken account so far? Housing benefit. What does housing benefit cost? I get £188 every two weeks. £94 per week. You know, I'm a single mum who, and I class myself as being independent. I've never asked anybody for support. However, I have been receiving support, and when I've broken it down, I am so grateful that that's been there. But is there anything else that might be? Your dad, is that right? Yeah. Jeanette? Yeah. Adult and community services. The costs that the council contribute towards my father's care is £300 a week. My father has care three times a day, and that, that, that's what we're paying for, three times a day, seven days a week. He's 82. He's lost both his legs. Mm. You know, he's not, he's not in a very good situation. You know, and it's quite difficult to tell you all mm. this because, mm. you know, it's, it's personal. But I don't understand how that should impact on the street. Because no, no, he doesn't live on the street. Community, not the street. But here, here is an example, if you like, of a genuine need from somebody in a community and a cost. I'm afraid I've given you a bit of a problem. You have more outgoings, potentially, than you have incomings. So now they're faced with a real dilemma. How to meet two huge demands with other challenges coming up and not enough money to cover them all. Different things happen that people have to make decisions about and we're in an era of cuts. And cuts means choices. And what we're just saying to you is it's choices time. Suddenly, I've had some bombshells dropped and that's it, the money's gone. So uh, it's uh, like real life now, like the real council. We're broke. Coming up after the news in the street that cut everything, yet more responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen of the street, Pam needs a bit more help. Means more cost and more effort. Oh, it's time, it's time. It's, it's awful, isn't it? And the street is tested to breaking point. I don't really want to speak to you at the minute, Jeanette. I'm not really bothered with the honest space. I mean, okay. I just came to ask you a question. There'll be a community that's in tatters. Forever. Don't have children. Don't have so many children. Because the people won't forget and they won't forgive. <sighs> Never dealt with anything like that before. This is the sort of people so judgmental I live around. I'd rather move. This conversation's finished. Judgmental, awful.
welcome back. So far on the street that cut everything. Over the last four weeks, the people who live on this street have been trying to cope without something we all take for granted. Council services. We've removed everything the council provides. Rubbish collection. We're just taking the bins, we're not taking any of our rubbish. Street lights. And the school bus. It is a long walk. It's, I think it's too long a walk for someone who's only 11. We've given the residents problems to sort out. Dealing with fly tipping. What a mess. And anti-social behaviour. Oh, we're getting crowbar out of garage and say that to f car in a minute. I've cut their budget and given them much more responsibility, including social care. Cuts means choices. It's choices time. They face the difficult choice of whether to help Tracy and her family with housing benefit. I'm just not going to allow my family's needs to be up for negotiation. Or to pay for Jeanette's father's care, even though he doesn't live on the street. He's 82. He's lost both his legs. And there's more to come. Facing harder choices with less money. How far will they go to help each other and the wider community? Would you be there? It seems not. Don't you assume. can never, ever assume that I was... No, wait. You know, it's, it's wait. Like... Before it all becomes just too much. Do you know what? Keep your housing benefit, because if this is the sort of people so judgmental I live around, I'd rather move. This conversation's finished. That's it, the money's gone. We're broke. One month has gone by and the residents are now facing up to responsibilities in the wider community, dealing with issues they've so far overlooked. I've arranged to take the whole street to an elderly care centre. With an ageing population, demand for care is going up, but budget and resources are going down. You are lucky as a street that you don't have many people who are very, very dependent on the council or on the taxpayer to look after them. But we are going to ask you to take a bit more responsibility for some of the people in your own community who find it harder to look after themselves. I brought them here to introduce them to someone in need. <laughs> it's their very own neighbour, Pam Pickin. I think you know Pam, don't you? <laughs> now, this is always difficult to ask in front of your street. Mm. Are they looking after you? They, the most of them go out to work. They, have, they can't be looking, coming in the door, asking me 24 hours a day if I want any help. Ladies and gentlemen of the street, Pam needs a bit more help for the rest of your experiment. There's one thing I, I would really like, like, and that's someone to help me with my ironing. Oh, God. Oh, I oh, can do that. Oh, like, put me down for your ironing now, didn't I? Yeah, there isn't much, you know, but... Well, whatever. Mm. Mm. Your budget is not going to give you everything. Because if you're to give Pam some meals and some visits, if you're going to help Jeanette's dad, if you're going to help Tracy with her housing benefit, there are some choices to be made. It starts now. OK. okay. <laughs> I'm challenging the residents to provide Pam with around-the-clock care, cooking meals, cleaning and doing day-to-day -day chores. Just the sort of thing communities may have to do if there are cuts in social care. I felt so awful tonight, actually, when she walked in and she was saying, well, you know, Oh, I can't do my ironing and I can't hold an iron. And, and I thought, oh dear, we've neglected her up to a bit. Where we're probably guilty is that Pam's, people have offered Pam help and she's like, oh, I'm not so all right or I'll make doing stuff and we should have been probably looked a bit yeah. deeper into what her needs were. These cuts, what we've done here, you know, what the, the programme's done, it's, uh, it has really affected Pam more than perhaps we think, really, because. We always get out, we yeah. want to go shopping and we want yeah. to just socialise. Mm. We just go out and do it, don't we? Like, but yeah. I suppose Pam's reliant on the... Uh... And people are a bit proud to ask as well, I suppose, for help. Who's <laughs> going to tuck her up in bed? <laughs> the 
The street's money isn't the only thing that's in demand. We've asked the residents to give up their time to do cleaning and maintenance jobs with the council. <laughs> Apart from litter and vandalism, the most common complaint councils receive is about dog mess. I hate dog dirt. It's disgusting on the pavement, I mean, especially if you get it on your shoes and then you trample it into your house. It's disgusting. We've had a real problem locally here, particularly on the route to school. Loads of people just not picking up the mess. And before now, I've rung the council and said there's loads of dog poo, and then they, you know they come out and they clear it up. So it is a problem around here, definitely. It costs Preston Council over thirty thousand pounds a year to clean up after dogs. Today, we brought a pack of hounds to the street to give the residents a go. It's a step too far. Your littering is bad enough, that gets people wound up, but excrement and fouling within the streets is a real, you know, contentious issue. Luckily for Chris, retired neighbours Hilda and John Joplin clear up the mess while everyone's at work. As luck would have it when it comes to Chris's turn to volunteer on a real shift, he ends up on gardening duty with neighbour Harry Mounsey and council worker Jackie. I am not just a gardener. Oh, sure you're not. Um, Part of my job is to actually empty the dog bins. Cracking. Yep. Right, so there's a little bit of weight to it. Yep. It's like a generation game, this real. Are you, go, are you going to give us points after, Jack? I, I certainly will, yeah. I'll give you marks <laughs> out of ten. Go around. Well, luckily, I've got a bit of a cold, so it, it didn't smell too bad. Do, do these bins get pretty full every week? Are we, are we talking about a lot of... In the spring, summer months, yeah. Three ton a week. That's a lot of dog mess. <laughs> So if if, if oh. I, my job, if I didn't do my job for 12 months and you had 150 tons yeah. of dog muck to get rid of, that's a big job. That's a big it? job for somebody once a year. Yeah. In more so ways it's, than one, it's a big job. Yeah. <laughs> when the residents last met, Jeanette was in the chair, and for the first time, some decisions were passed without a majority vote. Graham and Maria Haggis are not happy about it and they've sent an email to all the residents. I wish to register my absolute objection to any decision being made without a majority vote. When I read it initially, I was absolutely fuming. You know, that's a very direct comment, I feel, towards myself. I obviously responded. Your household sense of community spirit seems somewhat lacking, a factor I have perceived all along, shrouded by banal hypocrisy. I find your email offensive, bigoted, and quite frankly, ill-advised. <sighs> there we go. Very offensive, never been called a bigot in my life. We're just trying to say, we need to get a voting system in to agree on everything that we do. I just don't know who she thinks she is. Everything that Jeanette does, when you really look at it, is uh, wanting to be a leader in front of the cameras and outside the cameras, you know, she does a little bit and that's it, but in front of the cameras, you know, Jeanette wants to be the limelight. Maria has also called a repeat oh, meeting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll be there in the morning, Marie. <laughs> oh, Maria. So basically what she's done is, right, I'm not happy with the way things are going. I'm not having that being said about me. I'm going to control this situation. I'm taking charge. Hiya. Hello. Hiya. Have we got an agenda? No, I don't want you to come in, actually, Jeanette. Sorry, so. I don't. Right. I'm not coming what, in. What do you want? Have we got an agenda for this? Uh, we've got Tuesday's agenda, haven't we, that we didn't cover? and then whatever oh. was ar arisen in the Tuesday one. So we've got okay. the agenda we didn't cover. I've got the Tuesday one. Most of the things are covered. Right, well, we'll have to look at it, won't we? So we'll have a look. All right. Mm. OK, so I'm busy, to be honest, so mm. I don't really want to speak to you at the minute, Jeanette. I'm not really bothered whether you want to speak to me. OK. I'll just go to ask you a question. All right. OK. See ya. <laughs> she definitely has issues with me, definitely. No doubt about it. 
iPad. I've no idea what, what my problem is. It's so frustrating. If I knew what it was, I could maybe deal with it. What is she like? Sadly, I can't forgive her. I've never dealt with anything like that before. As the experiment enters its final week, life on the street isn't all about conflict. Are you alright? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. After I drop the bombshell that Pam would need round the clock care. Right, I'll see I'll you in a bit. See you in a bit. Okay. Tea, coffee, coffee, coffee. The residents have been rallying around. Tracy Tom's helping out and organising a care rotor with Hilda. It's yeah. nice to have someone come yeah. in to yeah. see you. Yeah. I mean, that is something I really miss about not going shopping with the uh, community yeah. transport. This is where I keep my cereal. Oh, please. Right. I just say when. Bit more, bit more, bit more. That'll do. That's a good appetite. The only thing that bothers me the most is going to be trying to organise everybody to be able to come and spend an hour. It's time. It's time. It's, it's awful, isn't it? I mean, I've got relatives of my own that need time. And to be honest, they're being a bit neglected because we're doing this. Going to visit your friend Connie, you want to go two or three times because you've not seen her. Mm. And that's no hassle at all. Carol Holden helps with the laundry. Very feminine ones, then. <laughs> You're passion killers, aren't they, these Yeah. Fans? Tell you what, they don't show a line so through not. your jeans and that. You know, there's the, a the, the good thing about them. <laughs> no. Hey, pal, are you well? And other neighbours, including Sonia Rayner. I've done your tiramisu, that's good, that's home, that's not homemade, but that's the sun you miss. <laughs> and John Jopling, they're keeping Pam in home cooked food. Right. Just having something put in front of you, ready. It it looks great, it tastes great, and it's something I've missed for a while, this actually. No, but uh... on top of Pam's care, the other big bids for the street's cash are for housing benefit for single mum Tracy and care for Jeanette's father, even though he lives a number of miles away from the street. The decision on who gets what will be put to the vote in two days' time. In the meantime, Tracy is the first person on the street to offer Jeanette help with her dad. Hi, Dad. I've got a friend with me. Today, by chance, a letter has arrived from the county council. It's proposing real cuts to disabled services and could mean that Jeanette really does have to take on her father's care. As the council has decided that any future domestic support, such as shopping, cleaning, laundry and other non-personal care tasks, can only be provided in the most exceptional of circumstances. And this is because the government has recently set out its plans to reduce the level of public spending over the next four years. So what services is the cutting? The cleaning the, and the gardening? The cutting, the cleaning, the, the, shopping. the shopping. I mean, the that, shopping. that's so important. How can, how can they, the how can they cut your shopping? Oh, cleaning. Cleaning and, and laundry. laundry. The things that you most need. Is alone all day, then? Yeah. You know, your employer's not going to say, it's all right, I'll let you have this afternoon no. off, Jeanette. For you to no, go, and do, go and do some shopping no. for your dad and... Uh, you know, sit with him for a couple of hours and I'll let you have the afternoon off with yeah. pay, don't that worry about it. Yeah. That will not happen. It's not, it, no. it, it's not feasible. That's the only social life he has. Well, that's it. Now, how can they cut shopping to a disabled person? How can they cut the laundry? Yeah. Hopefully it won't come to that. Well, if my father's care is cut, that represents a real difficulty for me and also for my father. And he's very worried about it, and so am I. It's week five, and the street has made a splash in the local paper. The council leader says it might show Preston in a really good light, but it might have been better than Western oh, Super yeah. Bear. Yeah, but Tina Milner isn't impressed by what her local council leader has had to say. You know, the thing is, he's not been anywhere near, has he? He's no. given permission. He never spoke to us before he gave permission. Yeah. He's never consulted us since. He's read what's in the paper. He's taken it all at face value. He's not questioned or spoke to anybody on the street. Yeah. Yet he can now condemn what we're doing, which I think is just... 
It's a bit weird he hasn't been round, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. I would have expected him to be knocking at doors and saying, are you all right? Are you happy that we've agreed to this? Do you yeah. need us to put your services back on? But he hasn't done. He's not shown any interest. No. And uh, I just think that's pretty poor, really. I think we need to do an open letter from the street. So, dear Mr Hudson, as you're aware, as a street, we have opted to take part in a social experiment. Tina invites the councillor to the street to meet all the residents face to face. I would have thought it would have been of interest to him because it's not something that's been done before. Um, so I would hope that he'd have some interest in seeing how we've done and maybe talking to us about our experiences. Final decision time on who gets what is fast approaching. Until then, the street is carefully managing its money. There are more council shifts to do. The residents will be fined if they don't complete all the jobs. Today, Joanne Baker and Tracy Tom have drawn the short straw. It's Sunday morning, and after Saturday night revelers, we're just wondering what we're going to find this morning. Yeah, I can cope with poo and wee, but not <laughs> six, six one. Oh, yeah. Are these blokes hand gloves? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have you got two brushes? No, I don't know. Only one. <laughs> he wants that one. <laughs> well, that sort of thing you want to do, is it? But you don't want to be patronising somebody who does it either, because somebody's got to do it, hasn't they? Haven't they? And I'm always thinking how disgusting public toilets are, so if you want to use them, you should prefer to clean them. Nobody's no better than anybody else, are they? Worst thing well, you've ever seen. The toilet roll with about ten, ten syringes in it. Right. One, and it was covered in blood as well. Really? And it was just chucked in the toilet. A lot of public toilets are closing, aren't they? But it is something you definitely need. Particularly when you've got young children. Having toilets is essential, isn't it, really? It's the middle of the final week, and it's time for the street to make its mind up. Morning. Pardon? The residents are preparing to make the hardest choices they've faced over the whole six weeks, whether to help Jeanette or Tracy. The meeting today is to, well, what I have gathered from it is to um, put to vote the care, the social care for Jeanette's dad and mine and the children's um, housing benefit and whether we'll get that or not. So it's just being put to vote today. If they help both, they won't have money for anything else. And see how it pans out. And obviously, make a vote in support of my dad. Some wonder whether these extra costs should be the street's responsibility at all, particularly because Jeanette's father doesn't even live there. We should look after our street first and the budget first. And in reality, and if this was long term, we definitely would be looking at our balance first and looking at what we've got before we start looking at things off the street or outside the street or, or even the rent that Tracy was struggling with. For these friends and neighbours, these choices are proving to be anything but easy. You know, to be honest, I'm a bit dreading this meeting, like, because I know there's been a bit of trouble down this, down this street this week. You know, I think it's got a bit personal, really, and it's a, you know, in my way to thinking, it should, it should never get personal. You know, I just hope it doesn't get heavy. I didn't feel part of the community when this first started. I've lived here two years and hardly spoken, had a lengthy conversation with hardly anybody, a couple of people, perhaps. But I actually do feel people do accept me as part of the community, which is nice. <laughs> it's Alistair Tom's turn to take charge. Morning all, morning all. Morning. First thing I was going to say, if there were any actions that anybody knows of that were left over from Tuesday. Right, can I just say, you've got the issue of the housing benefit yeah. and then you've got the issue of the care. Yeah, I think they're the two biggest. So we need to discuss, they're, they're the two biggest figures. Are the two biggest figures, are they the two highest yes. priority? Yeah. Yes. 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 Do we all agree on that? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. No. Yes? No. Oh, no. Yeah. OK. No. I, I believe we need to deal with issues that are on the street as a priority on the finance side and then look at anything off the street thereafter. The issue is, I live on the street, he's my father, it could be any one of us here, 
who's got elderly relatives, Maria's mother. It could be anyone who we feel we need to support in our community. If I needed extra support, you know, would you be there? It seems not. The other, no, now, the you other can't thing assume is, that, Jeanette. You assume. can never, ever the assume other, that other I was... Is, no, wait. You know, it's, it's wait, no, Jeanette, Jeanette, wait for it. Don't let me finish. Excuse me, you've just made an assumption that I wouldn't help your father. Who put her hand up and was going to make him meals at the, me at the meeting? Me. I have no reason not to help your father. None. We're dealing with yeah. finance. We're dealing with, with whether it should be dealt with yeah. as a street thing. I am not. So you're right, making this right. personal, really I'm point. not. Can I just make a really quick point? I think we're, we're all getting a bit stuck on the fact that Jeanette's father is off the street, but the yeah. person we're actually supporting is, is Jeanette. Not is anything Jeanette, else. Not Jeanette's father. Right. We are helping Jeanette. Thank you. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. Does right. anyone well, no, have an issue sorry. with that? Uh, point here. The simple... Uh, point here is all those in favour of spending the £80 out of our budget, raise your hands. Uh, one house. Oh, sorry, Tracy voted for us. All those against spending the £80, please raise your hands. One house. <laughs> else? Right. Majority vote, that's carried. Next on the agenda is Tracy. On top of the money she already gets for childcare, school meals, and taxes, she needs over £500 to cover housing benefit. Are we going to pay the housing benefit? Okay. Housing benefit. No, no, Should we pay? <laughs> yes. No, no votes for yes. Well, Anybody who votes no? Yeah. That's carried as a yes. Your objection is noted. Can I just ask what your objection is? And what do we get this for? Why, why do we get housing benefit? Because I can't afford the full rent with being a single parent and a student. I'm a single parent, I'm looking after myself, I'm looking after my kids. I've always struggled and I've always received top up for benefits. You what know. I'm saying is I'm, I'm a single parent, I'm a pensioner and I'm looking after myself, I'm not taking anything out of this. But I haven't been able to achieve economically what you have. You know, and hopefully don't have I've children. still got don't a few Don't have so many years. children, don't have dogs, don't have... You know. <laughs> Don't have so many children. At the end of the day, don't eat so much, you know. Every community's got a combination of... Do you know what? Keep your housing benefit, because if this is the sort of people so judgmental I live around, I'd rather move. This conversation's finished. You're saying I'm the only single... You're not the only single parent. I'm a single parent. There's two sides. How dare you? Don't have so many children. Judgmental arsehole. Things didn't go to plan right at the very end, you know, with Tony's out, outburst. I think it was a little bit, weren't very much PC by a long way, like, you know. You know, but there will be some people who say that a lot of people would lo love to say what he said. I, I don't like confrontation. That's why I walked out, and I will. I would happily move. Who wants to live? with people with attitudes like that. I certainly don't. I felt that there was one person, one individual there that was, that was asking too much of everybody else. And it was all me, 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 and I want something without giving anything out. And it got to the stage I just thought that something needed to be said. I said it, I might have gone overboard, but I think I was saying what a lot of other people was thinking. Done with now, move on. There'll be a community that's in tattoos forever. Because the people won't forget, they won't forgive. They won't, they've created enemies, you know, and it's, it's gone. Having invited local councillors over to the street, the neighbours are swatting up on what goes on at the town hall. Going to have on you personally. Very aware. Well, very aware. I've been doing a bit of research here and uh, looking at things that the council's been funding. And the logo change, £29,000 to change the logo. Twenty nine grand could pay for a lot of care. Various councillors were taking half an hour to, you know, say what any normal person would say in five minutes. So I think some of them just like the sound of their own voice. 
was it three million quid on gym equipment for uh, prisoners? You know, you sort of have to say, well, do not think it's a bit excessive when they're talking about closing respite care for families with disabled children, respite for the ill. They could just cut a few councillors. Yeah, that's what they could do. A day after Tracy stormed out of the meeting, her eldest daughter Casey has news for her neighbours. It's gone way too personal now and this is it for us. You know, she doesn't need the stress as it is, so the housing benefit will be back in the park because my mum and myself, we don't want anything else to do with it, so that's it for us. All right, well, I'm going to leave you to it anyway, so thank you. I she know. still needs a housing benefit. She might have dropped out of what we're doing, but, you know, she's still £564 in debt. Yeah. I mean, I must say I'm very surprised it's come to this because, that, for me, that was a priority. But then it's highlighted, isn't but it? But, as Casey's just said, it, it gets personal. Trying to manage and, and deal with other people's finances on the street, it gets personal, even if it's not intended. We are moving. I could live here. No problem, but I just haven't got the support that I need at the moment. So the best thing for me and my family, well, for me and Libby, is to move. The residents have voted to pay for Tracy's housing benefit anyway, as well as for Jeanette's father's care. This comes on top of all the street's other costs. The coffers have now run dry and the street needs to claw money back. There's hardly nothing left in the budget, so this is one of the cuts that we've had to endure by turning the street lights off so if we uh, if we turn them off and take them back to the higher shop we can get a few more coppers into our community hopefully we'll be able to have enough money to empty bins i'll take them back tomorrow hopefully get a bit of money back as six weeks comes to an end on the street making cuts remains a reality for local councils now into the new financial year projected cuts are starting to really happen, affecting services across the board from respite care to buses. Today, local councillors Ken Hudson and Eric Fazakali are visiting the street to meet the residents. Well, one of the reasons we're quite keen to see him is that early on, Ken Hudson just chose to comment on what we were doing in not too favourable a light um, without actually coming and speaking to us. So it's quite nice to see him down here. Hi. Hi, nice oh. to see you. I mean, looking at the Lancashire budget, the cuts to social care, I mean, they've just wiped care out for the best part of 4,000 people with moderate needs. Now, are we not just storing up a whole host of problems for the future? What, are people not going to die as a result of these cuts? Oh, Ma'am, do you have sleepless nights? You, you can't do otherwise, you know. I've been on the council for 33 years and I have never known anything like we've just had in this last six months. We had £21 million worth of government grant last year. In two years' time, we'll be down to £10.4 million. So that's a 50% cut in government grant. There's some, there's some areas in Preston, as you know, where there's 100% need on, on the council. Everybody's got benefits, everybody's got various needs and various, various services that they do really need to help them. But you can't expect those communities to be self-sufficient. You know, we're quite lucky here, but if you took that into various estates and various areas, it would break the community. Do you think it'll make a difference time. to your attitude, or do you think, in truth, the cameras have gone, you get on with your mm. lives? Has it changed you in any way? Yeah, I think it's, it's raised awareness of other people's needs within a community, whereas we, we didn't have that before. Jeanette, I remember when you were interviewed at the beginning, you said, I'm not sure we really get value for money for our council. I did, I, I did say that at the beginning. However, since going through the process and seeing what the council has to do for communities, I now fully support what the council does for everybody. Thanks very much indeed. I do. So after six weeks living without council services, what have we actually learned? Well, the residents of the street pulled together when forced to cope without the street lights and the rubbish collection and helping an elderly neighbour, but they were torn apart when forced to make choices about who did and didn't deserve their money. Precisely the sort of choices that politicians face every day. Of course, no street in Britain will actually cut everything, but every street will have to face the consequences of those sorts of choices. The residents have been put to the test day and night for weeks. Oh! Now it's over. 
conflict on the street is water under the bridge. And the bin men are finally back. I can't believe I'm 14 out of them excited about getting an old bin back. Oh, how good is that? Look, at first bin wagon for six weeks. The residents are positive about what they've learned. I think the lasting legacy from the project was the community side of it. I think we've worked together, we've, we've had challenges thrown at us, which we've dealt with as a group, and I think that that will um, stay with us, really. I think people will continue to sort of say hi in the street and knock for a brew. Bins, come on! Over the six weeks, we've um, learnt a lot from each other, and that's where I think uh, we'll move on. <laughs> we just want to hug you. Oh. <laughs> it's been a bloody nightmare. Hatchets have been buried. What this experiment has taught me is that you can't take people at face value, you can't make assumptions and you can't assume that everybody thinks in the same way that you do. It sort of brought us all together and drove some of us apart at the same time, I suspect, because I now know the names of everybody in the street, but some of them maybe I'm not as keen on as I was before when I didn't know them very well. And Pam's got more support than ever. I'd be more comfortable saying to any of the neighbours, any of them, if, you, if you're going to the supermarket, look at I've with you. Oh, we're getting on bin back. I'm glad it's ended. I'm shattered. <laughs>